Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here from QBKing77.com and it's time to review the official Android 6.0 Marshmallow update to the Android operating system. It's quite a bit that's new, so let's go ahead and take a look at all these changes. One of the first things that's changed is actually that boot animation, so here is a closer look at it. Lots going on, lots of different animations, but it looks pretty cool. And once it's done, it just shows Android and then boots your device up. And once booted up, it takes us to the lock screen. You'll see the clock's a little bit more bold. You still have your camera shortcut in the bottom right-hand corner. Instead of the dialer in the bottom left-hand corner, you swipe from the bottom left-hand corner, and it just opens up a very quick voice search. Now, to show you guys I'm on Android 6.0 Marshmallow, I'm going to go into Settings, About Phone, and you'll see Android version 6.0. This is the official build. Quickly tap on that to get to the Easter egg. brings up an M. It's different colored every time. You tap on it again, and then you have the little marshmallow with the Android guy. You press and hold on it, however, and it brings you to the Flappy Android, Flappy Bird style game. It counts down. It's revamped. New icons, as you can see. And, uh, yeah, it kind of feels a little bit easier, maybe. Maybe it's just me, but um, you'll see it has a touch input. I don't know what the point of that is. Wherever you touch, it has a little line going from the Android guy as well. Don't know what the point of that is. Now, throughout this video, make note of subtle animation changes. One I want to point out is when you tap on a specific app icon, it opens it from that specific icon. So if I go into here and go to calculator, you'll see from that calculator it opens up. When you back out of it, it just slides down. Okay, the launcher has been updated. Some of you might already have this launcher. Actually, it's in the Play Store. So we got wall brand new wallpapers as well. If you want to download these for your device, I'll link to where you can in the description of the video. This one's probably my favorite, so I'm just going to set that one real quick. Another update to the launcher is that the widgets page is now a vertical scroll, and then if you have multiple, you can swipe over like so. Scrolling down, you also notice there's a new sound search widget that got updated. So you see what's the song, tap on it, and it's going to listen for music. Now, another notable update is that the app drawer is now vertical scrolling. Some of you like it, some of you don't. I personally do like it. You also notice some app suggestions up at the top. Also, another little subtle animation when you go from the letters, it shows the first uh, app that pops up from that letter. So you'll see Instagram just kind of popped up a little bit at I, at F, Facebook kind of popped up. So that's just a nice little subtle animation. Also, quick tip, press and hold on the app drawer button, and you get a quick search up at the top so you can search your apps. Unfortunately, they did get rid of the horizontal launcher. It's still on tablets, just not on phones anymore. When we go into settings, you can turn off app suggestions. Like I said, that show up in the app drawer. Another cool feature on the home screen, if you have an app on there, you can press on hold on it and an uninstall option pops up so you don't need to do it straight from your app drawer. Marshmallow brings now on tap. So press and hold the home button. It does not open Google now anymore. It is integrated in the stock launcher still with a swipe over to the left. You can turn now on tap off and it will go back to how it was before where it'll go straight to Google now when you press and hold the home button. Now I have a demonstration of now on tap that has more examples, but one example that I really love is when I'm in a text messaging thread and someone says, hey, we're having dinner at Chipotle tonight, press and hold, Google now on tap's gonna read that screen, what's on it, you can create a calendar event for dinner, and it also you see Chipotle comes up, Google, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Plus, website, um, news, you have a bunch of different options, and you can do that system-wide, so whatever screen's on, you just press and hold, and Google now on tap's gonna load up and read that screen. Here's a little hidden feature within Android 6.0 Marshmallow. Now press and hold on the settings icon that's actually right there and you'll see it spin really quickly. Let go of it and it says, congrats, system UI tuner has been added to settings. So you'll see system UI tuner right here. Now just make note, fun for some, not for all. You can get rid of it by doing the exact same thing as before. And also you notice a little wrench next to that settings icon. Now here's what the system UI tuner can do. Going into quick settings, you can change how they are organized. So press and pressing on it and moving flashlight up to where do not disturb is. It goes right in front of do not disturb and there it is. So that's really nice that you can kind of customize that. You also have a reset option. Adding tile, there's a broadcast one that as well that shows up. Now going back, we have status bar. So here is where it actually shows those little icons and you can kind of declutter it. If you know you have an alarm on but you don't want to show the alarm icon, just uncheck it. Let's say you don't want to know you're on Wi-Fi, uncheck that, you saw the Wi-Fi icon disappear. Now the next one I want to show off is show embedded battery percentage. So checking it and you'll see my battery is at 21%. It's okay, it's not perfect though. Finally, demo mode just puts it in a stock look for app developers to take screenshots. And speaking of screenshots, if I want to take one real quick, volume down and power button, it takes it, 
Now, when I go into my notification tray, you can delete it straight from there or share it. So it's great that you can finally delete it because I accidentally do it sometimes and I need to delete them. Now, volume control's got an update for the better. So going down, you'll see vibrate only, go down one more and it goes to alarms only. So it's in do not disturb mode. You also see a do not disturb icon right there that shows alarm, alarms only, do not disturb. Um, you can change for one hour uh, until next alarm, until you turn it off, or total silence blocks everything, including alarms. Like I said, you could do it for one hour or until you turn this off, or go back to priority only. Now, let's go ahead and go back to those volume controls, and you'll see it's in priority only. I'm just going to hit end. Now, there's a little uh, arrow right here, and notice those little subtle animation looks pretty nice, and you have media control volume, and then also alarm volume as well. Now, cut, copy, paste got a really good update, so let's go ahead and press and hold on this, and you'll see it shows up right here as opposed to the top of the screen, and also check this out. It's when I say having, and I press these three dots, if you have Google Translate installed, it automatically translates it through the system. So that's a neat API that they included. Also, when you're going to select text, it does a full word selection when you go over to the right, and then it goes letter by letter when you go to the left, which is actually a really nice addition because it makes it much easier to just kind of select full words at a time, and then kind of if you need to be a little more intricate with it, go backwards with it. And when it comes to battery updates, let's go ahead and go into them. And what's really cool is per each thing, whether it be screen or an app, it tells you how many milliamp hours it has used, how long it was on. So if I go into the Google Play Store, you'll see uh, it's used 19 milliamp hours of my battery. Now there's also battery optimizations and there's a feature called Doze included in Android Marshmallow. And I can't really show that off because what's going to happen is when you are not using your phone for periods of time, screens off, it's going to dramatically save battery and standby time. So I haven't been able to test yet. Hopefully it does work well. Now another change is app permissions, granular app permissions. So for example, if I go into Android Pay and permissions, it will actually ask as they're about to use them. So camera, you can check, location, storage, you can uncheck all of them as well. So you'll see I go into settings here within the apps and app permissions. It lets you know how many are using body sensors, contacts, SMS. Now app linking is better as well. So instead of it asking you every single time, it lets you know which links are gonna open within which apps. Another added feature to cut down on the number of steps to sharing is here's a picture. If I press that share icon, it'll bring up a list of contacts and also app icons next to it, letting you know where it's gonna share to. So if you frequently share to certain people, so if I click on test, it's gonna open up into that person and also attach that image that I can send. There's also now a separate memory option, which lets you know how much RAM was used for a certain amount of time, and also each app specifically how much RAM that they have used. Now when we go to storage and USB, it calculates how much storage you have left and categorizes it. And also you have an explorer option down at the bottom where you have a built-in file manager, which has been much needed on Android for a long time. Going into sound and notification and then app notification, you can disable peaking per app. And what peaking is, is when that little icon pops down and lets you know when there's a notification. So for example, let's say you don't want Snapchat to pop down notifications. You can just uncheck allow peaking and it won't do it anymore. In sounds and notifications, you can go to other sounds and toggle on and off charging sounds. You weren't able to do that before. Now within the dialer, I believe it's supposed to have integrated visual voicemail as well. I haven't been able to test this out just yet. When we go to more and turn on tethering portable hotspot and set up hotspot, I believe it's supposed to have a five gigahertz band included if the hardware supports it as well. Now when it comes to tablets running Android 6.0 Marshmallow, there's really not much difference. One of the main ones is when you pull down the status bar, depending on where your finger pulls it down, the uh, status bar actually moves to that spot. And no, it does not include multi-window mode at all throughout the system, and no, it does not include split keyboard either on the tablet. Unfortunately, there's no dark mode option. Hopefully they can add that in later. And obviously there's no fingerprint sensor on any of these devices. Gotta wait for the new Nexus devices, which I will get soon. And that would be the official Android 6.0 Marshmallow update on the Android operating system. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Share it as well if you'd like. Subscribe to my channel. Lots more to come. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. All links in the description of the video below. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching.